Hi everyone, uh, this is Randy Swart, Extra Class Amateur Radio Operator at N2CUA, and just kind of practicing doing some videos here, I decided I was going to start uploading some videos to uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, what we've got here is a, a Rigel DSA815 Spectrum Analyzer with the Tracking Generator option. And um, I just got this um, earlier in the week and still working with it and getting used to the controls and everything. Pretty easy to work with, I have to say. Um, the buttons are pretty intuitive. Um, I started operating it without the quick start guide or the manual or anything. And um, pretty much everything in the soft menus is very easy to find, very user friendly. A nice analyzer, definitely a good bang for the buck here. Anyway, what I wanted to do um, fairly quickly, just for fun, was to characterize. I have a um, an old B and W um, low pass filter. As you can tell, it's been used, <laughs> and so I wanted to uh, characterize that and see if it does, in fact, uh, function as a low pass filter, which would mean it should pass anything below at least, you know, like 30, 35 megahertz. Uh, to effectively uh, keep out any harmonic content above that. It came out of an old HF uh, transmitter, a boat anchor, big time boat anchor. Alright, so anyway, first thing we did is we're going to hook the, the cables that we're going to use to do this. Uh, we've hooked the tracking generator output to the input um, so that we can normalize the uh, spectrum analyzer with this cable arrangement. That's uh, a very important thing to do. So the um, generator's on and um, so turn the tracking generator on and so you can see this kind of a messed up kind of line there so you can hit normalize and uh, store reference and I usually do the position on the reference to 80 percent it kind of moves it down into a position that's a little more user friendly as it were it doesn't affect the accuracy at all when you do that and then uh, turn normalize on and wait and there you go bam now the line sitting there ready to use so it's normalized for those frequencies um, <clears throat> so I'm going to take the barrel adapter off the cables here and put it onto the filter and what you're viewing right now is still noise because it's not really uh, frequency wise the span is, the span is not set up correctly so we're going to put the um, span down to about 60 megahertz I would say somewhere in there just something to work with and then uh, hit the frequency and we'll do the center frequency at actually I can just type it in um, yeah, let's see let's put it around 20 megahertz and okay so you already can see part of the trace there showing it um, let's see stop frequency we're going to want to increase that a little bit so we can see the actual roll off here there we go and so as you can see it starts down here at um, basically you know nine well nine kilohertz is the lower end on this analyzer and it goes just trucking along really good. If we turn on a marker, we have marker number one turned on. Now we can actually see it. It's right here. You might not be able to see it with the video, and I apologize for that. I'm going to be getting a better camera for my videos, but for now, this is what I've got. Anyway, um, where it actually starts, where that knee is, and it starts to roll off, is around 35 megahertz. And then if you, let's see, we put it up on top. So at the top, it's minus 20, let's just say minus 20 dBm which is what the tracking generator is actually set to for an output. That's the maximum output for the tracking generator. And then we're going to roll it down to minus 23, which would be the 3 dB point on the roll off. And when you do that, well, I guess this is as close as I'll get right there. It's about 36.16 megahertz, which is well within the tolerance for uh, an HF transmitter. Um, very flat it's um, and actually the amount of attenuation above that would actually be a good thing to look at so let's um it's calibrating self calibrates every so often now let's roll that marker down into the noise 
And down in here, we're talking like minus 60-ish. So that's about 40 dB of attenuation on any frequency above the 36 megahertz that we had. Oh, that's pretty good, really, if you think about it. Really, really good. So there you have it. Uh, it's kind of a quick video on checking a bandpass filter. Oh, actually, excuse me, a uh, low-pass filter. Uh, again, it's a really good analyzer, still working with it, um, but it's been very, very easy to work with, very nicely built, and um, I, I can't say enough times how much it's a good bang for the buck because I've compared the 1100 series specs with this one, and they're like marginally better than this, and actually this has a couple of options. I believe that the uh, the thousand series does not because this one just was released in like March or April of this year, in 2012. And then um, there's I think an option that the uh, thousand series has that this doesn't. Now the thousand series, like the 1030, goes up to three gigahertz, and this one doesn't. But other than that, and the specs being just a little bit better on the thousand series, this is pretty much in my mind after looking through all that just as good and as much of an analyzer uh, spec wise as the thousand series is just that it doesn't do quite as much and it doesn't go to three kilo or excuse me three gigahertz other than that though it's uh it's uh, really nice and i've enjoyed using it so far and and I look forward to doing some more tests and uh, uploading some videos so thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed it seven three